Hey, I'm here to discuss an as seen on TV and autoethnographic reflection on race in reality television by Robert M. Boylorn. And uh, what Boylorn seems to talk about this essay is how uh, ra uh, how is how's race uh, portrayed on uh, television, or more specifically reality television, how black females are represented on reality television uh, to a more specific degree. And one thing she uh, First off, let's identify the thesis, which I believe to be on 414. In this essay, I use autoethnography to look in and Hook's oppositional gaze to look out in order to challenge and identify with representations of black women on reality television. And so, uh, first off, the first thing we probably want to define is the oppositional gaze, which I have uh, defined right above, which is on 414. There's a couple sentences of the oppositional gaze in contrast to the autoethnographic gaze is critical, integrational, uh, Oppositional conclusion, uh, concluse, consciously aware, seeking to document and concerned with issues of race and racism. Hooks, 1992, the oppositional gaze resists intended and embedded ideologies that are based on racist and internalized racist views. Bell Hooks, 1990. Oh, that's actually a person. My bad. Um, but, and overall, it basically is kind of like an outward look, uh, on uh, kind of a more depiction of racism rather than, you know, self critical. Autoethnographic, how that's more of like an outward look on like you know television, while well, it's autoethnography, autoethnographic gaze is more of an internal scan. Uh, but um, she proceeds to you know go throughout the story and you know discuss how um, there's not enough uh, black women critiquing a lot of these uh, a lot of these stereotypes in the TV because a lot of what the television portrays is stereotypes. Uh, and she actually talks about, you know, how there's like a Mammy and a Jezebel as like some extremities as well as like a strong black woman. Uh, literally that word all in crammed into one, one word there. Um, and how they're all kind of, you know, put at these extremities instead of just being in between. And, um, she actually discusses how, uh, later on in the, uh, in the essay, how she struggles with, um, with, uh, you know, they uh black women want to hold on to these certain strong and powerful aspects but negate or refuse to connect with the ones with the weak access even though that's kind of the reality of it but they still want to hold on to the sense so they kind of want the strong representation but without the uh not without the weakness but um they want this strong representation with all the realities but they have issues connecting with such uh with such flaws because that's what they desire uh, a lot of them desire to be, and she uh, she mentions that as well in a story of hers. I feel like when uh, she's standing in front of a mirror uh, as trying to be like Mariah Thomas, I think is what it was, uh, which was eleven uh, Channel Eleven reporter, uh, how she was like you know getting all dolled up, you know like rehearsing and stuff, and her parents even make fun of her a little bit, saying you know you just like I, she don't know how she talks so white like, and that's another thing she mentions is that really caught my attention is that like white like like. If you don't speak like, you know, like an average black person, it's just considered white talk, which was interesting. As a white gentleman, I didn't really think about that. Um, how just speaking proper is considered white. It was just interesting revelation to me. Uh, but uh, another thing uh, she proceeds to talk about is how um, one thing I feel like is super important throughout this essay is overall she seems to harp heavily on TV influence on the young lives and on uh, the people in general. Uh, and I think one quote that I have here is, uh, Jewel, in 1993, asserts that stereotypical representations of black women influence how the dominant culture sees and treats black women. And that shows that, like, society sets these standards and we just fall into line with them. And we constantly, you know, get, and the black community also gets berated and just uh, sometimes made fun of for these stereotypes that are either not entirely true or are just so out of left field that it's just not okay. Um, and I think that's another issue is that like Black Panther was such a popular movie because it had such great black role models, uh, great characters of uh, very well developed and it gave a lot of people something to latch on to. That's why it had such a great acceptance and a great success as a movie because they were actually giving something proper to hold on to. And especially for black women because a lot of the cast was just black women. And it was such a powerful revelation because this uh, boy Lauren talks about how there is like either, you know, Jezebel or Mammy. There's, you know, this either really stern, you know, stalwart, like, I don't need 
anyone. I, I'm, I'm fine by myself. Because I was too stubborn, too pushy. A strong like woman, same exact thing. Uh, and then you got like, you know, someone like uh, Jezebel, who's super sexualized. But these none of those fall in the standard of Black Panther. And that's just something that really, really sang to me a little bit. And uh, then I want to talk about kind of like how cool the essay was at the end there. The uh, Sister with an Attitude, I think, S uh, poem was what it's called. Um, basically, to me, that really just ranked you. Because it's kind of like an interesting little way to summarize all the, like, the key points throughout a majority of this essay. And, you know, I think what she really, really is getting at is just the overall effect that reality television has on society's perception as well as uh, black women's own self-perception. And she even addresses how the only way this can potentially be fixed is if black women step up and sit there and claim all the aspects and sit there and refute and try to get involved and try to critique certain parts. Um, and to me, uh, overall, I mean, that's what the majority of the essay uh, saying for me, but uh, I guess the big question I have is, you know, like, how, how can we sit there and incorporate more stuff like the way Black Panther did? What other steps can we take? Uh, you know, can we, can society basically grow and learn off of Black Panther role models? And can we do something about that? Anyways, that's all the time I have. I'll talk to you later.